Why am I worried? I'm worried because I think that the world uh, is uh, um, in a very dangerous, unprecedented, uh, and poorly understood situation. And the two concepts that for me are extremely important in thinking about this, one I use in the subtitle of my book, Commonwealth, Crowding, Economics for a Crowded Planet. I think we're in each other's faces globally as never before. We haven't adjusted to the realities of a global interconnected society of nearly 7 billion people now and with those numbers rising by nearly 80 million a year. And I know that that crowding is leading to incredible marginalization of hundreds of millions of people in an extremely dangerous way. People you don't see that we would not naturally think about that our pundits and editorial writers and our government officials know nothing about. And it's only because of my accidental uh, luck personally to have gotten involved in very marginal communities and places in the world in marginal and in an economic sense that I've been able to understand this because I never would have from what I learned across the parking lot uh, in Litauer where I studied uh, or when I was teaching because I didn't know what I was talking about frankly for many many years of teaching because I hadn't seen these things with my own eyes and so one part of this is crowding and that's a term which for me means a number of things which I'll explain but it basically means a world that is not coming to grips with its interconnectedness, its diversity, and the pressures on the weakest and the most vulnerable in the planet, which include more than one billion people. The other big risk, very much interconnected with the first, is related to a term that I like very much, uh, coined by an atmospheric scientist who was a co-winner of the Nobel Prize for discovering the chemistry that underlay the threat to the ozone depletion, a scientist named Paul Crutzen, who coined the phrase for our age, the Anthropocene. And that's a geological sounding term, which he means to substitute for the technical term of our geologic epoch, which is called the Holocene. That's the post-Ice Age era in which civilization has developed, and now 6.7 billion of us live. And what Crutzen said out of his deep awareness uh, and deep understanding of the science of our time is that humankind, the Anthropos, has taken over the Earth's physical systems in ways that we barely understand but which are a profound threat for survival even. And he should know because it was only by accident that uh, while looking at possible implications of uh, the supersonic transport technologies in the early 1970s, he and others started to think about how certain chemicals, the chlorofluorocarbons, which were felt to be inert, safe, clever ways to uh, get your deodorant uh, under your arms uh, through aerosols would actually threaten the planet. And so it was an accidental discovery that CFCs would actually become chemically active as they rose to the stratosphere and the chlorine atoms then uh, would decompose the ozone level. And it took brilliant completely accidental sleuthing by a number of scientists to uncover this. We happened then to have a NASA satellite up in the sky that could take a picture of the ozone hole over Antarctica, which became one of the most famous pictures of the second half of the 20th century. And the combination of the science and the ability to measure it and confirm it led to 
a series of global agreements that, for a change, actually have more or less delivered what they promised, showing that it is possible to reach global agreements on these issues. I find it, this example, pregnant with all sorts of important meaning. First, the ability of humankind to fundamentally disrupt the biosphere. That's pretty good of us. That's not so easy uh, to do. Second, the fact that massive major things can happen without any awareness, and it's only an accidental scientific discovery, whether it was the uh, chain of uh, effect of uh, DDT through uh, the food cycle that Rachel Carson made famous in Silent Spring, or the far more important effects of CFCs on the ozone level. But these were things that were not understood. There was no search for their effect. They were only accidentally discovered. And third, the fact of the matter that what we're doing ecologically is at such a massive and growing scale and so multidimensional, so multifaceted, so far beyond our measuring systems, our technical knowledge right now, so unprecedented in extent, and of course not exactly the burning issues of our drill, baby drill campaign right now, that we're not exactly on top of this. When you put these two facts together, a crowded world experiencing still massive technical change and massive increases of natural resource use, and an environment already under pervasive threat only poorly understood and politically uh, almost uh, not in anybody's focus and with most of the world, including most of this country, uh, not even aware of it, I say we got a massive problem. And I think it's going to be that interconnected set of challenges that will be your generation's leading challenges not the ones we talk about every day, but these are going to be the challenges that will become the centerpiece of the global reality, whether they ever become the centerpiece of our politics or not. I see three fundamental problems then that need addressing, and they're all interconnected. The first is that in this interconnected world, our tendency to pose questions as us versus them and as inherently conflict-ridden as our first way of viewing the problem is becoming more and more dangerous. But it's a kind of dynamic that has a self-fulfilling prophecy about it. I think McCain and Palin have, will raise by several percentage points, certainly, the probability that we'll blow ourselves up in the next few years. That's not a small matter in my mind. I think the way of looking at the world that John McCain has, for whatever reason of history, background, honor, or ignorance, is extraordinarily dangerous. And the most dangerous statement of all that I know that has come out in recent years is his statement that the existential threat of our time is Islamic extremism. If you define the existential threat of our time that way and you pursue that in policy, the chances that we blow ourselves up rise immeasurably. 